Today's Ask the RDI Experts. Uh, we're featuring Jim Buck, Susan Gantner, and Charlie Garino today on today's webinar. Um, this is a uh, action-packed webinar because we're going to be going back and forth on various questions that were pre-sent into today's uh, to help build today's content. But we also will be taking your questions live too. So this is really your opportunity to ask some uh, thought leaders and some very experienced individuals on RDI. And speaking of that, let's have Susan kick us off and tell us a little bit about her background and what she's been up to in her career. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah, I um, started out my career as a programmer, um, like probably a lot of you out there. Uh, went to work for IBM for about 15 years or so, and then uh, went out, uh, left IBM, and mostly from since that time I've been teaching and teaching developers in various forms, uh, private classes and also um, conferences and things like that. Uh, obviously, uh, on what I'm good at, uh, what I like to think I'm good at anyway, is programming and programming tools like RDI. Awesome, and Susan's also an IBM Power Champion, so she's a good voice back into IBM if you have any questions or things you want to feed back into IBM. And then we also have Mr. Jim Buck, who's also an IBM Power Champion. Jim, what's your background? Well, I, I've been working on the platform since uh, 1990. Uh, taught at a college in Wisconsin for 15 years. Uh, taught uh, IBM I topics and three years ago, left the college and started a on-site and online IBM I education company. So I've been teaching WDSC and, and RDI since the uh, probably it first came out, um, but uh, I'm really excited about everything that's going on on the platform and, and uh, with RDI. It's, it's, a, it's come a long way since the WDSC days. Awesome, Jim, thank you. And then another power champion, fellow power char champion, Charlie Garino. Charlie, what about you? Good. Good morning, thank you, Tom, again. So as uh, Tom said, my name is Charlie Guarino. I am the president of Central Park Data Systems. We are an IBM I consulting, programming, and training company. I've been working, uh, like the other two presenters, I've been working on IBM Midrange my entire career. Uh, our team, uh, we specialize in application development, systems maintenance, and uh, modernizing applications and, and new technology into, new, into old applications, extending the productive life of these applications. Uh, with me and, our, and the team that we've built here, I'm really proud of what we do, and we're really staunch supporters of IBMI, and um, uh, thank you for this opportunity today. Well, you're welcome, Charlie. Great to have all three of you with us, and then uh, I'm Tom Honeyton. I'm our EVP of Technical Solutions at Help Systems, and I'm the moderator here. I've done RPG coding. I know what the RPG2 lifecycle is, but after that, I haven't done a whole lot. So um, actually, I've done RPG3, I guess. So, uh, but let's turn it over to Steve Farrell and talk about his background. And he's, you know, I almost feel like applauding Steve, and he's done a ton for this RDI product in a couple of years that he's been working with. Steve, what's your background? Hi, uh, thanks, Tom. I've uh, worked at Help Systems for 23 years now. Uh, the first 21 years, uh, pretty extensively RPG, CL, Java, PCML, C, um, a lot of user interface experience. And then I've had the pleasure for the last two years of uh, leading the uh, RDI team, uh, which is great. Uh, it's been fun to work with the team in uh, Toronto as well, um, the IBM team. And uh, like I said, I look forward to uh, to uh, keeping the product uh, going, expanding it, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. So off to our agenda, we're going to talk about why RDI and what's new. We're going to have Susan do that. Then we're going to um, have ask, ask the RDI experts, and then Steve's going to wrap it up with a little roadmap on what's coming in RDI in the near future. So... First, before we do that, I'm going to hit us up with a little polling question here. We're going to have four of these uh, throughout this uh, webinar. We hope that you can answer these. Um, the first one we have is we want to know how much experience do you have with RDI? I have more than five years. I have one to five years, less than a year, or I have no experience at all. Um, so this is a live webinar. If you have to leave early today or anything like that, we will have the recording up on our website at a later 
point in time. You should also get a follow-up email, and we hope to even respond to all your questions in that follow-up email if we have enough time. It's going to be quite a chore because we obviously had a lot of questions coming into this Ask the Expert uh, RDI event. Um, very excited about it, and if you don't know why is Help Systems doing RDI, you may or may not know this, of course. We actually work on this technology, and Steve, who just talked, is on our team, and he's been doing that, as I said, for the last two years. We do some of the net new and those things with it. So, all right, let's see here. I'm going to close out this webinar, or this poll, rather, <laughs> not the webinar, and share the results to everybody here. You should see them now. Looks like our kind of level set mid-tier is one to five years. We have 44% of you, 26% uh, more than five years, 21% less than one year, and then about 8% of you with no experience at all. So we want to thank all the new people for joining us too. And uh, let's turn it over to uh, Susan to talk about why RDI in the first place. And I think that that's one of the challenges with this product is really helping people out explain why they should be using it. Over to you, Susan. All right, thanks, Tom. Um, do we have the charts up? We should I'm have charts up. Them. Are you guys seeing my slides? And have I done a bad job of being a presenter here? Tom, we're no, still, we seeing still seeing the quick poll. Survey. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Good point. Ah, uh, there right, we go. Great. <laughs> I thank you. I have <laughs> That'll to make it easy. Off the polling. So, <laughs> here you go. Okay. Um, so. Since many of you are already RDI users, perhaps you already know of the primary reasons to move from SU to RDI, but we often get, as a matter of fact, one of the questions we did get uh, from some of you was, uh, how do we convince other people? So maybe it's still useful even for those of you who are uh, RDI users already. These are uh, some things that I found in my teaching of RDI in conferences and, and online um, lots of different ways in which people find RDI very much uh, a huge advantage. So these are the top five reasons that uh, I've written an article about. One is that you can see more code, and others that you can see more information at your fingertips. Um, code understanding and navigation, there's a lot of uh, facilities in, within RDI built in to make that so much easier. Um, of course, compiling, and I'm sure most of you don't ever get compile errors, but sometimes, occasionally, if you do, uh, it's kind of nice to have a much easier and faster way of resolving those compile errors. And of course, it's the only IBM editor that fully supports modern RPG, and not just modern RPG, actually, we had some questions about COBOL. Uh, all the modern language enhancements are only supported in this environment, um, at least in terms of IBM editors, because the green screen ones are not. So it won't support anything like reform declarations or built-in data, uh, new built-ins or new data types and things like that. So I've got more detail about each one of these, not a lot, because I promised to keep this uh, as short as possible to be able to answer all the questions that you guys sent in. Reason number one is about seeing more code, and what do I mean by more code? Most of us have uh, a lot of programs that are quite large, sadly. Uh, but we're going to be working with those for a long time. And so the more code you can see at a time, the easier it is to understand. So, of course, with the green screen is it depicted here, you pretty much have a fixed number of letters uh, in lines of code. No matter how big you make the screen, it just get the letters get bigger, but you don't see any more code. Whereas with RDI, it's limited really only by the size and shape of your monitor and perhaps your eyesight in the sense of, you know, what, what font you uh, can use. Uh, and there are lots of ways that we'll see as we go through this as to how we can make that even better, like uh, getting rid of comment lines, any comment lines that are there, you can filter all those out quickly. You can split the screen vertically so that you can see full code on both sides and all that kind of stuff. Um, get it, moving on to reason number two, information at your fingertips. So I call this metadata about your code. So what I'm showing here is if you're hovering over uh, a variable, you can see that not only the definition of that variable, but now in more recent releases, you can actually see the context of that. So you've, in this case, the one that we're seeing here, we can see it's a, a subfield of a data structure. And we can even see comments. If there are comments associated with that particular item, we can see that it's not just data items, it's uh, subroutines and procedures, um, things like that. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see the outline view. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yep. You can see the outline view 
uh, which uh, contains more information, so there are multiple ways you can get to it, and the two can sort of stay in sync. Uh, also notice on the right-hand side at the bottom there, the, uh, the, the CTR field, you can see that the, um, you can see the where used, so you can see not only what the data item is, but all the different places in the program where it's used, and the little M after it saying that it's uh, modified on that line. So just a few examples of information available at your fingertips. I mentioned about uh, reason number three, on those rare occasions where you might have a compile error or two during the course of a day when you're when you're doing your coding, um, never having to look at a spool file again, uh, or at least a compile listing spool file, I should say, to find your errors. They pop up in front of your face um, in, uh, in the error list. In my case, it's just below the uh, editor. And so not only do the errors show up there, but it, you can double click on one of those errors and be positioned directly to that line of code. So uh, I, I save, oh, I hate to admit it, but probably several hours a day just with that one feature alone. Um, and reason number four, I could go on and often do go on for hours, uh, code navigation and understanding all the different things that we can see in RDI about our code that we can't see in the green screen. So I'm just depicting one of them here, which is um, the uh, what's called block nesting, show block nesting, so you can see uh, where the, you know, if you're still working in the sole fixed format code, and I think a lot of us still are, uh, this kind of stuff is really useful. Hopefully in free format, your stuff is already uh, indented so that you can actually see the format of the of these kind of things by using indentation. But um, in fixed format, of course, we need a little extra help. So we've got things like show block nesting. Even in free format, of course, we've got uh, indentation, automatic indentation, just in case you're not sure if it's indented properly. Um, and there's lots of other things. My very favorite one is uh, uh, using navigation to jump directly to a part of the code. So for example, I put my cursor on an execute subroutine, jump directly to the subroutine, and then jump right back to where I was. So things like that is another thing that saves me just a ton of time during the course of a week. And reason number five um, is, I say here support for today's RPG because RPG is the language that seems to be changing more dramatically, shall we say, than, than most of the other languages that we traditionally work on in our, our system. Um, I'm just depicting here what um, trying to do freeform declarations would look like in the green screen in SEU. As you can see, it looks like a whole lot of errors uh, because SEU doesn't understand that syntax at all. Whereas, of course, in um, RDI, not only does it understand the syntax, it actually will give you help with the syntax. So, for example, if you don't remember what all the keywords are for that F spec, which I often do forget exactly what keywords um, need to go there, you can just press control space and it brings up a little dialog uh, to help you finish uh, with a list of all the keywords that are appropriate at uh, that particular juncture with where whatever you're coding, whether it's an F spec or in the logic or, or whatever. So um, those are the things, those are the primary reasons that I see people moving from SEU to RDI. Now, for those of you that have had experience, since most of you have, according to the poll that we just saw, um, hopefully you have been able to keep track of uh, some of the latest things that have happened just in B9.6 alone. And this isn't a complete list. This is just a, a list of what I consider to be the highlights. Um, we've already talked about the hover, the, and we saw an example of annotations with my compile uh, errors a little while ago. We've got some new key behaviors for the enter key and the tab key. Uh, compare facility has had merge um, added to it. Um, object table view, um, another one of those topics that I often talk for a long time on, that it's uh, enhanced a lot. If you used it to object table in the past, you want to look at it again in 9.6. Um, being able to open up a, a source member for edit and then just switch it over to browse mode so I don't accidentally make changes to it is really handy. Uh, of course, an extended trial period, uh, code coverage, for those of you not familiar with it, I think we'll be talking about it in answer to one of the questions a little bit later, but that's been enhanced in this time frame um, with keyboard shortcut to just uh, zoom in and make our font sizes bigger in the editor. So for those days when you're having trouble actually reading and focusing on the screen nicely, uh, that's a help. It also helps when you're showing code to somebody else. Uh, as you're scrolling through the code, you can find out where you are. Um, 
and uh, by the subroutine or procedure uh, name appearing at the bottom of the screen. And of course, yet another um, entry into the refactoring for extracting text constants. And that's what, just what's available already. Uh, we had announced last month 9.6.0.7, which is not yet available. So I can't talk from personal experience from any of this stuff, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of uh, improved SQL format formatting we're going to see. I'm really looking forward to being able to more easily find uh, preferences because there's so many of them. Uh, and a lot of people have trouble with their managing their library lists. And so uh, there's some things coming to make that a little bit easier. Uh, really another turn of the crank for refactoring RPG code, in this case, creating procedures from blocks of, of logic in the code. And also, of course, uh, support for the latest RPG enhancements like overloaded procedures and the new data gen op code. Wow, thank you, Susan. That's a lot of great tips and a lot of new things coming on. Let's move into the part that we really promised now, Ask the RDI Experts. I think we answered some of your questions, though, in Susan's piece that she provided here. So we're going to move it over to Charlie. And one of the questions that came in as you guys registered is, what are some tips some, for a new user? What are some new user tips that you got, Charlie? Sure. So one of the things that I... I think it's just change, changing your perspective of the tool. Keep in mind that RDI is not just one thing. It's really a, it's a toolbox of many different tools. It's a collection of tools. And think about what you're actually replacing. You're replacing your entire collection of application development tools. So with each tool, by the way, there are different ways to use each of these tools. I, I think this is sometimes what intimidates new users. Keep in mind that RDI is based on the open source Eclipse product. This is a good thing because once you learn how to navigate within Eclipse, every uh, each of those tools will be much easier to use. Each will, each will have a similar look and feel. So how do you get started? How, you know, how, where do you begin to look? Do you know that there is so much free education online? You just need to know where to find it. There are lots of articles online. Just Google RD, uh, RDI. You'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised. There are also lots and lots of videos online on YouTube. Just go into YouTube and once again, search RDI and you'll find many, many videos. I know many of us have uh, published videos out there and you can take a look at that as well. And the final thing I want to just point out to um, get started is once you actually open the tool, I, I call this the power of the right click. And that's important to know because you really can't break the tool. But if you just right click on everything or on, on anything, most things, you will get a drop down menu and you will it will help guide you through the process to quickly get on board using the product. And the final thing I want to point out is that you can also speak with any of the experts on this phone call, on this webinar rather, and we do all offer training of some sort. Thank you, Charlie. Well, we have another one for you is how do we correctly set up an RDI connection? How do we set up a connection? So I am assuming that the person who asked this question already knows how to create a connection. That's just done through the new connection dialogue. I think the, the, the larger question here is how do you how do you configure a session to make it most productive? One thing that I, I always always equate a connection to in RDI is a green screen session, if you can believe that, because it, it has a similar concept behind it. It's going to have a library list associated with which Jim will talk about in more detail later. It also has, for example, if I type in add library list command on the in the commands log, that library will be my library list, but once I log off or disconnect, it will no longer be there. So the proper way to set up a connection is to make your your um, your settings permanent is to take that connection that you've created, right click on it and go into the properties of that. Once you open up the properties, anything you put into the properties, every time you connect to that connection, all of these settings that you've preset will get loaded for you. As again, the library, library that Jim will talk about. You can also create an SSH connection if your shop requires that. You can set up a default user ID. You can also set up things, for example, where should objects compile? What library list should they, should they compile into? How do you want to compile? 
each time batch or interactively. You can assign a job description. You can even set up an initial command. That's all available to do within the properties of the connection. So that's how you do it. The final thing I wanna say about the connection is that keep in mind that you don't have to have just one connection to the same system. Think about how many different green screen session you might have. Each one might have its own library list or, or point to different, different user IDs, for example. So use them to your advantage. You use up, I have several connections all going to the same partition. That's perfectly valid, it, it works, and it's really a good time saver. Awesome, thank you, Charlie. Well, we did get some, um, what I consider to be pretty simple questions, but I think we should handle these too, is how do you compile code? I would think everybody would wanna be able to do that in RDI, and Jim, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, first you should realize is, is that what actually happens with RDI is it takes a compile command and submits it to the operating system, just like PDM does. So it looks a little bit different, but the commands are, are, are really the same. So in this uh, slide here, we're, we're compiling from the toolbar at the top, and I'm showing the just regular compile commands, like doing a 14 um, from PDM. So if, it, if you just click on create bound RPG, it submits it, and then you can go to the next slide there. Okay, so in this one, I'm showing how to compile from the RSE view on the right hand side. And as you notice, at down toward the bottom there, I've selected compile prompt. So this is like putting a, a 14 on PDM and hitting F4. So what it'll do is it'll bring up a screen. And if you wanna um, notice, this is kind of reminiscent of the screen you would get when um, you do F4 in PDM. So I, I, I selected a SQL program to show you that, that this is where you would actually go and change the compile type if you're gonna create an SQL module. Uh, at the center of that little screen, you have star program or PGM. Um, you would change that to star module. So that, that causes a, a lot of consternation by people when they first start working it. That's the, the two things I see a lot. Also notice that down at the bottom, it's actually showing you the compile command that's gonna be submitted to the operating system. And then there's two, oh, go back there a second, sorry. Uh, there's, there's the advanced, all parameters and keywords. So you can select those if you wanna see all the parameters. And then if you, I, I always like to look at the keywords, you would click on keywords and then it would show you all the keywords right to the left of where you put the parameters in. Okay. That's good, Tom. So if you wanna switch. Okay, now there's there's two views at the bottom of your screen. And while well, they're at the bottom of your screen, unless you've changed something, the first uh, view that's important is the error list. And as you can see, I just compiled a simple program. And what it's, what it's telling is that there's an indicator in there that's not uh, referenced uh, severity zero. So this is where all of your errors would show up. Um, and it shows you the se severity and, and where it's at. So if you had an error here, you just click on that error and it would take you to that source up above. The other one that I always tell people they should check is the commands log. And, and this is kind of like a consolidated job log. And as you can see here, it actually tells you that the, um, the, the program was compiled and where it was compiled at. As we all know, you can sometimes try to compile stuff uh, in places you shouldn't where you don't have the authority or something. And that will not show up, uh, hold up, if you can go back, that will not show up in the error list. So what I'm telling you here is that you can compile a program and you would get no errors in the, the screenshot on the top, 
but you're if you looked at the actual commands log, the object wouldn't have been created. Okay, now Tom. Um, then. Uh, so Jim, this is another one for you. How do I manipulate my library list in RDI? Okay, and, and Charlie talked about this a little bit. So as you can see here, what I've done is I've clicked on um, objects in the RSE view uh, and then right clicked and selected properties down at the bottom. And then I selected the initial library list and one shows where I can add libraries to the library list. Uh, there's also a current library, so I can change my current library. And then there's initial commands, uh, could be just a command or it could be a program. Uh, lots of companies have programs that run when somebody logs in, so you would put that here. And what this is actually doing, your library list comes from a combination of your job or your, um, your user profile and your job description. And what this does is actually override that. And Charlie talked a little bit about having multiple um, connections open. And what you can do here is you could create a connection and you know to a URL or an IP address. And then in the connection name, you could say, you know, like maybe one day you're working on accounts payable stuff and you could name it with like AP and then set your library list for, for that type of work. And then you could create another connection to the same URL or IP address uh, with maybe, um, you know, uh, shipping or something and then set your library list up there. And the only restriction in setting a connection is the connection name. You cannot have two connections with the same name. So next. Uh, so what, I, what I've done here is um, I'm doing an add library list. And what I right click that and um, I can add the library and I can put it at the start of the list or the end of the list wherever I want to place it. And then I can also do a change current library. So once it's been changed, uh, I didn't, sometimes you think about things after you've done the screen print, but down toward the bottom in, in the RSE view, right to the left of copy members, Tom, you see user libraries. Lots of times I see people that first start using RDI will try to work out of their user libraries. And, and that uh, causes a lot of problems because what you see there is all the libraries that you, you have access to on the system. And that can be kind of confusing. So it's really best to get used to working out of your library list uh, than try to do stuff out of there. So. Thank you, Jim, for handling that question. Let's move on to Charlie again. What's the best way to transition from PDM to RDI? What would you recommend? Sure, so my recommendation is if you're literally just coming off of PDM and going to RDI for the first time is in the very near term, use RDI like PDM. I say that because there is a new perspective, fairly new perspective built into RDI called the PDM perspective. And uh, there's a blog on there, blogs on this, there are little videos on this. I am convinced this is the best way to, to transition from PDM to RDI. When you open up, when you first go into RDI, there will be a drop down box that looks exactly like PDM work with members, work with libraries, objects. That's, that all sounds familiar, right? The, the quickest way is once you have your, your, your list of objects or your, your list of members, just the same way you do in PDM, is to use the PDM commands. They, many of them work two, five, three, things you recognize. But as I said earlier, RDI is a true collection of tools. Don't try to consume and learn the entire product right out of the gate, because that's where a lot of users get intimidated. 
just use it as an editor. I think that alone will really give you a good, there's some good introduction. There are so many great features just in the LPEX editor, uh, editor which has replaced SCU, the L LPEX editor. LPEX editor alone will tremendously boost your productivity. And in and of itself, there are so many related views that we'll talk about more, outline view and other views that will really quickly deepen your understanding of the code. Just by oh. going to PDM perspective, I promise you, you're going to keep that learning curve very low. All right. Thank you, Charlie, on that one. Now we're going to move back over to Jim and talk all about the, the built-in help and how you can filter and how you can work with that. And he provided some screens to answer that question. Jim, back over to you. Uh, I, I would like to add just a little bit uh, to what Charlie said okay. about the transition from PDM to RDI. Uh, I always tell people uh, that they shouldn't try to be like the guy that's going to get in shape January 1st and learn RDI in a week, uh, especially when they have a project due because uh, you'll end up in ICU just like the guy that tried to get in shape. Uh, what you should do is you should treat it like a toy and just uh, allocate 15 or 20 minutes a day to play with it like a toy. And if you would do that for two weeks, you'd be surprised how good you get with RDI. And the second thing I'd like to add is I've never known anybody to take the time to learn how to use RDI and then go, you know, I think I'll just go back to SEU. It's a one way, it's a one way street. That's a great point, Jim. So, so I just what do you think wanted to throw that out? What do you think about help? And I know we got a lot of help. questions, so I'm gonna try to move you along a okay. little bit on this. All right, help when when you first go to help, and what I did here was I uh, clicked on the help uh, up at the top, and you get this window here, and as you can see, it's kind of overwhelming. So one of the first things you need to do is you need to learn how to limit what you see. So if you click at the next screen, okay, so what I've done here is up at one, I've clicked on scope and then it opens this little window and I've clicked on show only the following topics, that's two, and then three, I click new. So if you wanna look at the next one, and you get this window here and what i've done at the top there is i've named um this this selection and it's i named it i ile rpg reference and i clicked on the reference now notice that these all have plus signs so i could further limit this but i just clicked at the top level so that's going to give me all of the ile rpg reference manual essentially and then click OK. Now if you look at my uh, help and, and remember when you're making these type of changes you're doing it all to the workspace you're not doing it to the actual product. So when I click OK here then I could actually select um, the I, ILE RPG reference scope and then any searches I do up in the search bar at the top left hand corner will be limited to the RPG reference manual. And you can create multiple ones of these over any of the topics shown. So next. Awesome, great job, Jim. What we're gonna do now is uh, Susan's got a little demonstration she's gonna do. So I'm gonna make her presenter and she's gonna show you how do you do a block cut and paste and how to move things around. Susan, you should be presenter now. All okay. right, nice job. All right, so this is something that I just didn't think I could explain easily in words, so I just thought I would uh, talk about this. So somebody said, I just have like a, a, a small bit of text from within a larger piece of text, like a rectangular block of text that I want to copy somewhere. Um, and as you, as you probably know, those of you that are familiar with it, if I just try to select it with my mouse, it's a little hard to get that rectangle. Um, so what I do instead is I use uh, keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to position on the top of my rectangle and do Alt-R for rectangle. And then I go down to the opposite corner of my rectangle and do another Alt-R. So you can, now I've got it selected. Now I've got it selected. Now here's the, here's the thing that a lot of people, you might 
normally just do control C, control V. If you do that, I promise you, you're pretty sure not to get what you want. Um, so I think the best thing to do at this point is now that you've got it selected, just move to wherever you want to, to put that code. Now, if it's on a blank line or at the end of a line, then you can just do um, Alt C, um, which is for copy, Alt C for copy. Uh, and it will just move it there. Matter of fact, I'll show you that, but I'm not gonna put it at the end. I'm gonna put it, um, say I wanted to put it here, for example, I can just do Alt C here. Now, if I do the Alt C, and that's only one of two options, you notice what happens is that it, it took the entire rectangular bit of stuff and text and it shoved everything else aside and put it in there. And in some cases, maybe that's what you want. Um, but in some cases, that's not necessarily what you want. Uh, so fortunately, of course, I've got undo capability here. So I'll just undo that and let's show another option. Let me just select that Alt R thing again. So I'm just moving down to the rectangle. Obviously the rectangle could be any uh, size that it needed to be. And this time I'm just gonna move down there. Notice I'm not doing an Alt C or anything beforehand. I just move wherever I wanna go. And in this case, instead of Alt C for copy, I'm gonna do Alt Z, Z as in zebra. Um, and you'll see what happens there is it just overlays whatever was there before. So depending on your target and what you, how you want that uh, paste to behave when it gets there, you'll probably wanna use either Alt C for copy or Alt Z for overlay. Um, by the way, just one other thing, once you've got things moved that way, uh, notice that it's still, the, the stuff that I moved is uh, highlighted. So if I just do, for example, an Alt, F8, that shoves it over to the right. And if I do Alt F7, it shoves it back to the left. So it's kind of nice that you've got it there and now you can shift it around exactly where you need it to be. Awesome. Great, great job of showing those keyboard tricks. Uh, Susan, um, I, I know there's some shortcuts and you've been just showing some of those things. Is there an easy way to get a concise list of all the keyboard shortcut mappings in RDI? Uh, yeah, well, huh. uh, <laughs> Concise list <laughs> is a little <laughs> tough because there are so many. Um, and can you put the chart back up? I've, I'm still seeing my screen. Okay, yes, here we go. Because I have a, have a link now you there. Have, yep, now you should have my screen, right? I'm not seeing it. Maybe everybody else is. Yeah, everybody else is, for sure. Okay, yep. in that case, uh, sorry about that. So, oh, that's right, because I am I was over in my RDI. Now I understand. Okay, uh, so... <laughs> Uh, the, the two quite, the two words there, concise and all, um, you know, there are a gazillion uh, keyboard shortcuts that are that you could possibly use. So what I did for myself, because I had this same question, uh, was I created my own shortcut key list. So I just created one that, of the, all the shortcut keys that I thought were particularly useful for my own use. And the link that you see there uh, on that chart will take you to a place where you can download that. Um, that list, you can even actually uh, ask them to mail you to, uh, an actual hard copy of it. There are other places where there are shortcut key lists. You can There are places within RDI where you can get a list, a partial list in various places for um, of shortcut keys. Like in the editor, you can actually do question mark SEU and it will bring up all the ones in the editor. But I found those because it was too much. Um, it was too hard to find what I was looking for. So what I had to do is I just made a list of the ones that I found most useful. I keep adding to it from time to time. So I would suggest that you might want to start with mine as a starting point, but maybe you want to create your own uh, keyboard shortcut list um, for your favorites, because if you have a list of all of them, it's too many. That's a great point. Well, let's uh, move along from that one. And and by the way, you'll get handouts from today's presentation, so you'll have that link in there if you missed it. Does the Mac version have the same capabilities as the Windows version? We have people doing coding in Macs today. That would be me. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, I, uh, yes, I think uh, of, the, of the experts here um, uh, in this session, I think I may be the only one using a Mac. So um, I can certainly talk to this and I am so delighted to be able to not have to run Windows, a Windows environment on my Mac just to do RDI, which is what I did for many years because I didn't want to live without RDI, but I also didn't want to live with Windows. Um, so I, uh, the Mac version can do almost everything. There are some fairly significant uh, things it can't do. The native Mac version can't doesn't have syntax checking, which you think would be a major disadvantage, but 
Oddly, it doesn't seem to bother me that much, um, interestingly, because there's so many other things that uh, make that better. Um, it doesn't have Verify, and I was a big Verify fan before the Mac version came out, so I must confess that was uh, something I had to get used to. Um, but these days, compiles are so fast on most of our systems that I just do compile instead, and I haven't really noticed it that much. Uh, there's a few other things, and the link that was on that chart uh, takes you to an article that I wrote about my experiences of using the, the native Mac um, version. Thank you, Susan. And I know I'm looking at our time, so guys, we're going to have to speed it up as we thought we'd have to. Is there any way to speed up the live parsing for the for the outline view, Charlie? Uh, the answer is yes, there is a way. Next question. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did kind of joke, right? Uh, Don't use it, right? <laughs> no, actually, that's the... The short answer is you can just simply close the outline view, and that you don't necessarily you don't need the out, uh, the outline view to do any source code editing. However, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there are several ways to edit source code, and there is there are some different opinions on this. If people use the outline view or they don't use it, I personally love it. I find it very helpful, especially when I'm using two monitors because I open it up to a second screen on, on the full size of the monitor, and I, I find it very helpful to 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 um, to navigate in the code. I should point out that that's the live parser. There is a preference within the tool to turn off, to still have the outline view present, but to turn off the live parsing. And then at that point, you have to go and manually, there's a refresh button right on the outline view. You can click on that and that will refresh it for you. So that that's the short answer. I know I'm trying to move forward. Thank so you, Charlie. Yep, <laughs> actually, that. actually Thank Tom, you. can I interject real quick? I was gonna say, this is Steve. Uh, yep. For that question, it's very specific. So if someone is having difficulty with parsing over VPN, I would suggest contact IBM support so we can take a peek, um, see we can look to see if there's a, a, a roadblock or look at speeding that up. So Okay, from please. a development perspective. Okay, got right. it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so how do you set up new functions where all programs appear on the bottom of the screen, kind of like SEU? And Susan, I think you wanted to also do a live demo here, so I'm going to give you back presenter control. There you go. You're muted. All right, thank you for that. That's all right. <laughs> Forget about that. Uh, so I think what the person's talking about here is the object table, uh, which I'm showing down here. Um, I'll just go full screen on it, just double click there to go full screen. You can see what I'm looking at. Right now I've got a list of members. It could be objects or libraries as well. I'm just gonna click back down. So I believe that's what the person's referring to there. Right. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan of Object Table. Now, it is actually part of Remote System Explorer by default, but chances are in the old Object Table, maybe you didn't find it useful, and so you just closed it. So let me just close that and pretend that I did that a long time ago. And now I've decided, oops, now that it's got enhancements, maybe I should go look at it again. So I'm going to go to Window Show View, hmm. and Object Table appears right there. So all I have to do is open it back up, and there's my Object Table. Now, one other thing, then sort of, I'm going to uh, have a premonition of the next question, so I'm going to go, right, go ahead and, and do that and deal with that. Uh, of course, something like object table is uh, pretty big, and so chances are, what you may want to do at some point is, uh, as Charlie mentioned, that you can you can take he took his outline view and puts it on a different monitor, so you may very well want to do that with something like object table or even one of the edit windows. I mean, it really doesn't. Have to, it doesn't matter what it is, but pretty much anything that has a tab on it like this, I'll just use object table as an example. If I kind of drag it outside the, the scope of the edge of the um, workbench, uh, notice that little rectangle that appears. If I let that go, I now have a completely separate window that I can now move and shape and size in any way that I want, including, of course, moving it to another, um, another monitor. Now, the question that we had wasn't on how to do that. The question that we got from somebody um, who wrote in was, how do I put it back after I've done that? And that is sometimes the bigger challenge. I think what some people try to do is they try to take the whole window and shove it back down there. What you need to do is just take the tab. You really just reverse what you did to get here. It was the tab that you moved. So you take the tab and you drag it back down and you can just drop it back on top of uh, the tab you want it next to. And now you're right back where you were. Awesome. Good job on that one. Thanks. That that that's kind of cool. I like how you how you did that, Susan. All right. Let's move on and talk about something that's really important in the product and all of us use at some point in time is how is RDI debugger better than start debug from the green screen? 
and Charlie's going to talk about requirements, service entry points, and variable views in two minutes or less. <laughs> Go ahead, Charlie. Less. Pressure is on. <laughs> so where do I start on my favorite topic? All right, yeah. so as far as the requirements themselves are concerned, obviously it's a compile, it's a compiler option. Uh, when you, you have to use the source, as a minimum, the source debugging view, which is a default for RDI. You can also use listing or all. You don't want to use statement view because that will give you a very ugly screen to start trying to debug from. Uh, it's important to know that again, RDI does use source statement. Talking about service entry points, if you've ever tried debugging on a green screen using star debug, another person's program, you know you have to start a service job and that you have to supply the user ID, the job name and job number. That all goes away with RDI. You don't have to worry about all that. All you need to know to start a service entry point, which is the functional equivalent of that, is the user ID and the program you want to debug. Once you have that set up, the next time that program is started by that particular user, you will go into debug mode automatically for that for that program. It's very, very easy. As far as the variable, the variable view is concerned, this is probably my favorite view of the entire debugger. Why? Because you know that in the green screen, if you want to see one particular variable, you're doing eval statements. The variable variable view will show you in living color every variable that's available to be seen in a separate window or a view. And the same way I talked about the outline view, I do the same thing with the variable view. I can move that to my second monitor. And as I step through my code, it gives me the ability to see the, all the variables changing and they turn different colors as they, as they change. And of course, if I want to change a value, I can just go on into the variable and over type that. The, uh, the final thing I wanna talk about is this breakpoints. Unlike the green screen debugger, you have to uh, set your breakpoints in while in, while in start debug. RDI or really the LPEX editor allows you to type in your breakpoints ahead of time. And when you launch the debugger, the breakpoints will all be set at that point. So that's only a brief thing there. I can promise you the RDI debugger far, far surpasses what you can do in green screen. And I can promise you, if you go to Common and sit in on Charlie's session, he'll do a great job explaining that even further. Right? Thanks, thanks Tom. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, next question we had was, how can RDI help me find out whether I have tested all the lines of my program, right? We don't want anything hidden that hasn't been tested. Susan, what are your thoughts on code coverage? You're muted, by the way. I'm going to remember to do this, to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> now that this is my last time, I think. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so really the question uh, is pretty much answered by the title of the chart. Uh, code yeah. coverage is actually the name of the tool. Um, what it does is it allows you to sort of monitor as you run your tests, and it checks to see, it, it as it's monitoring, it keeps track of which lines of code you actually ran, and then it produces a report. At the end of the testing, uh, it produces a report to, that you can bring up even to, down to the line of code, each one marked to say you ran this one, you didn't run the, that one. So it's really fairly simple, um, but uh, it takes a lot longer to explain uh, how to do it. So I've got links here to a two-part uh, article. Actually, there's a third part yet to be published, but uh, two-part article series that I've written on the subject. So if you want to know more about it, you can email me or you can uh, look up those uh, those articles. And definitely something you can't do in SEU or PDM, right? <laughs> For sure, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we actually had some questions coming in about plugins. Uh, Charlie, what, what are some recommendations on plugins and are there some that you use? Sure, so it's important to uh, just remember again that what RDI is a plugin? Is, what sure, is a plugin? So, absolutely. So RDI is based on Eclipse, the open source product. Eclipse by itself allows you to add more programs or more views or perspectives to our, to Eclipse or to RDI. That's what a plugin is. You can, if you want to see them, and there are many, 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 it's very easy. You just go to the Eclipse marketplace. How do you get there? That's also very easy. You click on help on the top toolbar, and the, in the drop down menu, click on Eclipse marketplace. It will bring you to a, um, a screen where you can just keep scrolling through the different things that are available. As far as um, my one that I recommend specifically would be the one that's meant directly for RDI, and that's called iSphere, which is a completely free product, and it plugs in or adds into RDI and extends the usage of RDI programmer functions. 
uh, within that tool, some of my favorites are the Enhanced Job Log Explorer and an, uh, also a Journal Explorer. And they have also things that give you quick things like quick edits. So you can do a quick edit, for example, to a binding directory, things like that. There are so many little tricks in there. The important thing to know is it's free, as are many of the plugins. And just take a look at the Eclipse Marketplace and I think you'll find you'll be pleasantly surprised what's available. Yeah, and somebody was asking specifically about turnover and is there a plugin for that? Um, this is Steve. Steve. There is, um, and what I did suggest is that they contact uh, their vendor as far as how to download Off landing it. Or, or Unicom, Correct. right? Correct. Awesome. We do awesome. have several customers who are using it today. All right. Can I create a service program using RDI? I think, Mr. Jim Buck, that's for you. And you're muted. <laughs> the tough thing with multiple experts there you go there we go sorry about that uh oh, yes you can and it's actually easier in my mind than doing it with uh pdm uh it supports binder source binder directories uh, it's got a really cool um retrieve binder source that's really cool you can copy it to your um your clipboard or actually write it to a source member um, so yes, you can, and and we were going to try to to do a, a short demo or have some slides, but uh, basically you just create a module and then you right click the module and tell it you want to uh, create a service program, and if you've got binder directories in there, it it handles all that too. So awesome, thanks, Jim. Um, so really, kind of one of our last questions we had for the experts was. What are the hidden gems gems in RDI that can make me more productive? And Susan, what's one item that's hidden that you think people just need to know about? Well, I referenced it uh, in passing in, in my intro charts, uh, the one about navigation. My favorite thing is being able to put my cursor on a subroutine name or a subprocedure name, press F3, jump down to that routine, do whatever I need to do, and then use alt left arrow, to which navigates me directly back to where I was. So I don't waste a lot of time, um, you know, browsing around through the code, figuring out where I need to be. It also works for definitions of uh, variables and things like that. Awesome. Charlie, what's your one, Jim? This one is easy for me. The one that is hidden in plain sight is called the remote scratch pad. This, the remote scratch pad, you see it there right on the, right the RSE, but many people don't know what it actually does. It, 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 by opening that, it lets you drag things or copy things from the RSE tree, and it lets you su quickly subset and quickly navigate within the, from the RSE tree. It basically lets you create a subset of your RSE tree. There is an entire video on this, um, and you can take a look at that. And I, I go step by step in that particular video. It's it's the remote scratch pad has been around since the beginning, and most people don't really know it exists. It's something you may want to read about. Awesome, awesome. And then while the polling, I opened up a polling question to save a little time on how help systems can help you. And you got a few options from document management, business intelligence, encrypt IBM I data. Our developers need training on RDI, or let's just do a tech update with help systems, and we'll update you on everything new at Help Systems. Uh, take in a few moments and answer that question. And we'll turn back to Jim. Jim, what's your hidden gem? Well, I want to reiterate what Charlie said earlier about uh, right-clicking being your best friend. Um, okay. You should right-click everything. And then the other, uh, my favorite one is when you right-click in a source member, sure. uh, select the, um, the source the it throws up a little window and select the source and you can like do block comments and block nesting and all kinds of cool stuff there awesome awesome now we do have uh let's see one more question here and i'm gonna just stay in this mode with the polling question up and ask susan what are some functions of rdi that work with COBOL? Uh, can you use COBOL with rdi i think you answered that earlier but uh, any tips on that yeah, basically, uh, you know, COBOL is a, a pretty small minority audience compared to RPG. So a lot of the features that we've talked about here and that we and that we see mentioned and talked about uh, are very RPG uh, specific. But don't let you don't want to forget that uh, you know RDI does work for COBOL. It may not have have all the bells and whistles that uh, it has for an RPG programmer, 
but it's so much better than SEU. Almost all of the top five reasons that I talked about early on apply to one degree or another anyway um, to to COBOL as well as, R, as RPG. So it, it is quite a good tool, uh, so much better than a green screen for COBOL. You know, and the, crazy, the crazy thing too is that there's quite a few, there's a good percentage of people using COBOL on IBM I because we see it in the IBM I marketplace study and I forget the number off the top of my head, but it's at least somewhere around 10 to 15%. Right. So, yep. Yeah. So thanks for answering that. All right. Well, that's a lot of great uh, Q and A here on RDI. Um, what I'd like to do now is we did the polling question, so I'm going to roll it over to Mr. Steve Farrell, and Steve's going to talk a little bit about some of the RDI roadmap items, which I'm sure a bunch of you are waiting to hear. Hi. Thanks, Tom. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, I know we're we're running out of time here, so I'll, I'll go very quickly here. But again, we're continuing to focus on security. Productivity is huge um, because we know that you know more of us are asked to do more with less time. Less time. Um, we want to keep up with reliability and uh, currency, and what, I'll explain currency in a little bit. Currency is is uh, important as well. Um, keep up to date with the most current Java. Um, build upon Eclipse. It's a great uh, a great playground where we can have other um, functions come in via plugins. Uh, but more importantly, you know, someone had a question about Content Assist. There's some things where Content Assist doesn't work. We want to continue to expand that. Add quick fixes and code extraction. Um, I, you know, we we did announce uh, back uh, in October that. That we are expanding that. I can tell you right now that it's going to be the expand, the extracting of uh, business rules, so you'll be able to create a procedure from that. Um, it's currently in beta right now. Um, what I'd like to suggest to people is monitor the RFE system, right? Go If there's something you're looking for that we don't do today, go out there, add a request for enhancement. You can find it by doing RFE IBM, and then there's also a great uh, um, article out there on how to uh, to find it, I think, from uh, Susan's website. So all as you do is go out to the great Google and do a, a, a search on that, right? Right, right. And, you know, it'll take you right in there. There's some great ones that are out there right now. You can find other ones. Um, the currency that I talked about was making sure, like Susan had said, that we are current with RPG. New things come out in RPG. New things come out in COBOL. Um, they, IBM is not um, doing any changes to SEU and PDM. Um, they are giving us the changes. We're bringing them into RDI uh, with each release. So next slide, please. So uh, just to expand a little bit, Tom, next slide. Yep. Okay. You're on. There you just go. to, okay. Uh, so to expand a little bit, what we're talking about is quick, uh, quick finds and quick um, when you are running into a library. Um, I think it was Jim Buck showed the library list. Um, we've expanded that with the library list panel this time around. Um, we plan on expanding that in the future as well. Um, extract and replace constants. Today uh, we have uh, literals that are replacing. We'll be doing the uh, numeric ones uh, in a future release here. Content assist lets you choose uh, fields in the prototype. Or expanding that a little bit with this release. We'll continue to expand that in the future. Uh, extract procedure, again, business rules extracted out. Um, once we get that released in this release, we'll be expanding that to allowing you to create um, and find procedures. Um, and then really the, the key is to take all those complicated panels that we have in IBM and from IBM, um, and make them simple, right? So within RDI, any of those complicated panels, we wanna give simple entries. A great example of that, um, if you are using the current version of RDI, go take a peek at the uh, option three PDM option of copying uh, to a new, uh, to a new uh, library or member. You'll, you'll see that new panel, it's wonderful. So that's all right. I have today. Um, awesome, I, again, thank awesome you. job, Steve. I think we do have, we have a couple of polling questions too for Steve and I apologize and we all talked about this. There was no way in heck that we were gonna get through all these questions today without going over a little bit. And I hope that our panelists can stick with us and just go over the top of the hour a little bit here because we do have some Q and A also and we have a couple of 
very important RDI questions that we want um, from our development staff. They want to know what are your biggest challenges in business in using RDI? Um, is our tech stack is too complicated? Uh, we can't create embedded SQL programs fast enough. We lack version source control. Uh, we don't have time to create unit tests. RDI is too complicated to learn quickly. And this is a select all that apply. So you can select multiple ones here. And uh, while you're answering that, um, we do have some questions out there too. Um, you know, Tim has a great uh, comment about a uh, great webinar, really enjoyed it. Um, is there a command line in RDI like green screen? Can you do commands from RDI? Anybody willing to yes, jump I was. Out? Just answering that one, but you can from the object table view, you can use the F9. And what's okay. great about that, Tom, is you you can actually do batch or interactive commands. So in order awesome. to use interactive commands, you would have to start the uh, the uh, a green screen within um, the session. So awesome. Uh, so Tom, I think you had one more slide. Um, or a question? I do have, yeah, I have a couple more slides. I got one more polling okay. question. We'll put that up here just in a bit. I'll uh, just to remind you from Help Systems, we do do the RPG Toolbox, uh, Surveyor 400, Easy View for Developers, Abstract for Program Cross Reference. You want to simulate dates, we have a tool called AnyDate. Uh, Schedule helps a lot of developers in building uh, contingencies and dependencies in their nighttime processing, daytime processing, and SQL certainly is a powerful BI tool that you can use from help systems. And of course, we help you with security, automation, business intelligence, and document management. I wanna thank you for joining us on that part. We do have one more polling question. I'm gonna throw that up and then we'll maybe hit a few more questions. If any of our speakers see a question out there they'd like to handle, um, I'd love to, to entertain doing that. Um, so Steve has a question from our developers. Would you be interested in participating in a, um, customer experience and how you're using RDI, I think is kind of the the, the jest behind that, Steve, wouldn't you say? And um, Right, so what we're looking for here, yes Tom, no. <laughs> yes, we're looking for someone who, who would be willing to do an interview, uh, say 30 minutes of your time. It doesn't really matter what your experience level is because we want to get multiple experience levels, so. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we'll let that question up there. And um, any question, do you all see the tab? Any ones that you want to attack here, question and answer while we wait for this polling question? Okay, nothing. Uh, somebody asked about creating a filter of just data areas, I think, if I understood the question properly. Sure. I looked at it quickly and I just went in quickly just to make sure I was right about the answer. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I can do that in object table. Um, so if I go into object table um, and there's a little filter thing on the right hand side uh, and I just put in my library and an object name and uh, just limited it specifically to data areas and then from there I can just click the button at the bottom that says create a, a filter an RDI RSE filter out of this. Right. So, and then also of, very importantly we have the slide up now you should see the slide where um, we have our contact information for our three experts and all three of them would love to help you out and they do do services around RDI. Uh, so feel free to uh, take down their email. I guess you can probably Google these guys and find them too that way. <laughs> uh, I wanted to add to yes, Susan's Jim. answer. You can also use the work with objects to create a filter uh, for data areas. Awesome. True. Thanks. Any other questions out there that one of you are just dying to answer? Dying to answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's well, pretty I, extreme. I guess what I just uh, add, I'll, I'll just add one more thing about the command line in RDI. Just make sure that if you're going to use the command the command log view in RDI, that they must be batch commands. Any command that begins with work or edit or display will not work because it does go to a batch subsystem. That's important to remember. So you can't do work spool file, work, things like that. There are some other, there are functional equivalents of many of those commands, but those exact commands will not work in the command log. Yeah, okay. Anybody wanna tackle the question about converting RPG 36 code to um, today's formats? I think probably your best bet there is going to be um, another help systems product with um, the RPG toolbox, although I don't think they go all the way from 36. 
But you could probably convert most of the code if you just treated it as uh, regular RPG2. I don't know for sure. I, but uh, Steve, do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm uh, I, you know, on that one, Tom, I, I suggested uh, contact or again using Google. Google is our friend. There were some uh, quick uh, uh, links that might show you how to do that. Um, and again, like Susan said, I, I believe RPG2. Um, I can check for the sure. RPG toolbox that we have might be able to help you out. I, I know it does, you know, standard RPG uh, from a system 38 perspective, but I'm not sure about the 36 code. We'll double check on that and we'll put the answer into the into the list too if we can do that. So I wish I knew. I don't know that off the top of my head. Well, you know, um, I want to thank all of our guests today, Steve Farrell from our development team, Susan Gantner, uh, Jim Buck, Charlie Garino. You guys have been fantastic to work with. Uh, this event was recorded. There will be playback. You will get a copy of the handouts. I want to thank all of you for joining us. And we're not really too far off to say enjoy the holiday season as we're almost a third of the way or two thirds of the way through the month of November. I know in the U.S. we have Thanksgiving coming up and around the world we have, you know, the, the great holidays coming up in December. So enjoy yourselves out there. Enjoy your families. And thank you for joining us on another Help Systems webinar. And thank you to our guests. Thanks, Tom. You're thank welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're welcome.